Hey guys, it's Jen Wiederstrom, your coach for the next, I don't know, five or 10 minutes. Uh, a lot of my coaching, I focus on personal development and growth, uh, behavior change, motivation, a lot of uh, honesty, a lot of um, reflection, and a lot of stuff that can be kind of exhausting. <laughs> so today, I decided I wanted to focus on a very different part of you, and that is right here, your core. I found that nine times out of 10, people that are trying to work their core, whether it's for strength, for rehab, for shape, for shrinkage, for abs, they're not putting the correct breathing behind it in order to get the results that they're after and frankly excited and motivated, motivated by. So today, I wanted to break down your breathing mechanism around your ab work and how you can actually strengthen that core and the ab work that you do when you're not even doing sit-ups as well. Okay, so I want to start with the actual mechanism and details and cueing around the correct breathing when you're doing any kind of core work. This can be a plank, this can be a crunch, this can be, you know, dead bugs and, 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 and this can be bicycles, this can be any ab movement that you put this breathing behind and it will change everything. Because what happens is I see you guys in person when I've coached you and, and all, the, all the videos I see when you ask for help, you're, you're moving like you're doing an ab, but you're really not doing an ab. And I'm gonna tell you, if you do core work correctly, if you do eight to 10 the correct way, it's better than 50 the wrong way. I'm telling you that right now. And a lot of what I have learned through this is based on a lot of practices I learned in Pilates. I have some mentors of mine like Dr. Belisa Vranich. She's a breathing coach. Uh, she teaches the biomechanics of breathing around the psychology that goes with it. So fascinating stuff. But today, let me just break this down um, to kind of help you with what you're doing with your programming and throughout the year whenever you need this kind of support. So here we go. I'm gonna show you what I typically see happening when people do, I'll start with the crunch. So I'm gonna scoot away so you can kind of see. Feet are side by side, hands are behind the head, right? And what I tend to see is arms cramped around the face, I see an arch in the lower back, and then I see a rocking up, an arch and a rock, and not only that, a Are you laughing when you listen to me do that because that's what you do? <laughs> There's a like a bracing that starts to happen, and two things are wrong with that. Whether you're bracing or you're and you're, or you're straining out of your throat breath, we are creating the wrong uh, recruitment of the stuff of the stomach muscles in the wrong shape. So what starts to happen, number one, is when you arch, I've got all this room under my back, okay? So it doesn't force me to breathe the correct way. So what I want you to do is to settle in that spine, what, what in Pilates we call neutral spine, and we're gonna be here. The next step, I want you to kinda take a peek at my stomach when I do it the incorrect way. Right? My stomach shoves up and out every time. And you have to think the way you work your muscle is the way it's going to shape. I do not want my body to shape outward. I want it to be in and flat. I am not a woman that's after abs, but I do want a flat, tight stomach for sure. And if that's you, listen up. And men, by the way, abs or not, this is important for you too. So the key is instead of bracing, I want you to, actually I'll show you right here. Think about you're at a birthday party and you've been presented with a cake and candles and you go blow out the candles. Would you go, <gasps> <gasps> right? No, no air goes out. You can't get enough air, enough power to get that fire out. What I want you to do instead is blow out the candles. <sighs> right, you ever watch little kids? That's the face, that's the air, that's the sound I want you to make when you do your abs. Because what happens is when you do that, put your hand on your stomach with me as I do this, you let your belly kind of hang, this is a great, like I'm hanging out here. Flat, breathe in. So it naturally creates this contraction and shrinking formation of your uh, muscles, not just from the front, but all the way 360 around your stomach. And that's the way I want you to perform the abs. So let's bring you back down to the floor. Take a peek at me. Hands are behind your head, except this time your elbows are open wide. So we have our lungs open and extended. We're not closed off. Your chin is up. You breathe in. 
And by the way, watch as I, br I breathe in, I didn't arch. I breathed in, stayed neutral, filled my stomach and my full lungs and diaphragm with the air. And now like a birthday candle, And look at my stomach come away from my hands, right? Versus the out, good way, in. And that's where we start to film, or sorry, form that corseted feeling and strengthen your abs. Take it another way. Look at a um, plank, right? People hang like this and they hyperventilate, like, Look at well, the way my body is shaped. You guys know I, I'm not, I'm like a healthy weight. I literally have abs. But what I want you to do is when you exhale, I'm literally not thinking about any part of my body. I'm not thinking about what my hands are doing, what my body is doing. Sorry guys, the side comb over is really hurting me here. I'm as simply asking you to just breathe like that. So step one, when you're in any kind of ab, when you're doing planks and iso, when you're doing crunches, you could be doing bicycles, slow everything down. Everything like that. If people look at you in the gym funny, that's fine. You can laugh at them, be like, yo, I got abs. <laughs> okay, so trust me, trust me, trust me on this. When you breathe right, you get abs. That's how it works. It's gonna create connection. And like I said, my favorite part for men and women, it's that corset. 365, sorry, three, 365. Not days, degrees. 360 degrees around your waistline, we're coming in. And why I especially like that as well, if you have any kind of back pain or uh, have had a history of back pain, when you strengthen your core, you support your back. It's critical. And if any of you are listening and you have a little bit of belly weight, you have to realize your belly, the weight is, is pulling you forward. It's stretching and it's making it difficult for your back to kind of hang on. So even if you have belly fat, if you <sighs> during those abs, you're gonna support your lower back. Now, to that point, I also said, that what you do when you're not just doing abs is gonna be helpful is really critical. It's the case, okay? So I hope that sentence made sense. <laughs> My brain's three steps ahead of you. So when you're literally sitting at your desk, when you are sitting on the floor, when you're, you know, like I am, when you are sitting on the couch, it doesn't matter. If you are listening to this on the couch, God bless you, that's okay. You can do this exercise on the couch. One thing that you re need to know that as I'm teaching you these movements, right, whether you're doing abs and stuff, you have to realize that if you do not work the biomechanics or the extent of those muscle fibers, you won't be able to get as deep of a breath, you won't be able to get as much air, and you also won't be able to get as good of a contraction. So to put this in two different terms, think about a bicep curl. If I am working just like this, how strong is my bicep gonna get, right? It's what we're doing when we breathe. When I'm in the car working stuff, I'm sometimes short of breath, I'm this, I'm that, and we have like this suck it in syndrome going. So I'm very much breathing in my upper lungs and I'm basically doing this versus So full range of motion begets more muscle recruitment, more access, which means more contraction, which means more results. So you literally sitting on your couch right now or in your car, listen to your podcast, please, please, please. Let's stop breathing like this. That's all here. We're creating tension traps and we're only filling up this much of our lungs. Our lungs go all the way down to here toward the back, right? So instead of Use the wheel of your car, right, or your couch. Keep your upper body settled and go. Got it? Trust me, two things are gonna happen here. One, you're gonna be shocked of how much better you feel. Getting enough oxygen in is something that we do not do very well, especially as adults. Look at babies, look at children, look at your pets. Their bellies always do that when they're lying and sleeping and sitting, right? 
that's how we are supposed to breathe and we are the most malnourished in oxygen. So even if you are listening to this today and you're like, Jen, I'm so not ready for the gym. I'm so not knowing how to start with sit-ups. I don't even know what that means. I can't get that. You can get this, right? You were born to breathe. How many thousands of breaths do we take a day that you can practice in? Just extending that belly and don't worry like, like we, as I said earlier, we have this suck it in syndrome, like we walk into a room, we gotta be like this. So walk into the room and be like that for a second, but then let it drop, let your belly hang. Breathe in air. Birthday candle, blow it out, okay? So whether you are breathing for abs on your couch or breathing for abs during your sit-ups and your core work, start to use this. This is really information, uh, good information. Please rewind, watch this again. Uh, please comment below. Let me know if you like seeing stuff like this. I know it seems rudimentary, but it's so fundamental to your greater success that I can carry this not only into your sit-ups, but I can carry it into your squatting. I can carry it into your running. There's so many great things here. Um, most importantly, um, the breathing for life and that kind of oxygen nourishment. Um, you'll be surprised what it does for you. So that's it for today. Lots of love.